I think that's the piece that, you know, it hasn't been really said that way for funnels or for evergreen funnels is that no matter how many people you have in your list, like you're going to have millions of followers, eventually for your evergreen funnel to really work on autopilot, you will have to use ads, right? Hey everyone, my name is Jack Bourne. I'm the founder of Double End Funnel. And with me today is Roberta West. She helps entrepreneurs launch digital products and make money while they sleep with evergreen funnels tailored to their businesses. So this topic is very near and dear to my heart. She holds an MBA in operations management and recently quit her 10-year corporate career as a launch manager in biotech to help 1 million entrepreneurs launch digital assets in their businesses. Great to have you here, Roberta. So good to have uh, the opportunity to talk to you guys. Uh, I've been using Deadline Funnels for a while, and uh, I feel like it's a dream come true to come and chat more <laughs> about it. <laughs> so, why don't you why don't you tell us about how you tra- how you transitioned and why you transitioned from your corporate gig to uh, working for yourself? I know you know that was a big move in my life when I made that transition. So, I'm sure it was a big move in your life. How did that come about? Well, honestly, I loved both sides and I was having, you know, I was uh, carrying a a side hustle for, you know, a couple of years and then the pandemic came about, you know, 2020 and I loved everything in my life, just couldn't decide. And then the pandemic with the pandemic, you know, my son got out of uh, um, daycare or preschool, whatever. So I was full-time homeschooling, full-time working on my corporate job and business picked up too. Like there was more interest in, in, in digital courses and all of that. And I felt like I just couldn't, couldn't go any further without making a decision. And, um, I decided to just set a plan and say, you know what, in three months, if I can get a solid kind of proof of concept of my side hustle, if this is a viable, (laughs) uh, you know, full time, I'm going to quit. And, um, I did it and it's part of what we're going to talk today, like how I manage this crazy, you know, uh, being full time in three different <laughs> in three different uh, uh, positions, and that that's pretty much the 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 short version of how I or why I quit. I actually loved my corporate job. It's been mm-hmm. my career for long, so long, and I mixed, uh, you know, found a way to to mix that launch planning with the marketing and digital product kind of side that was my side hustle. I was able to merge those two with my offers and uh, the rest is history and never look back, burn the, burn the boats as they said, (laughs) never look back. (laughs) Well, my, my, my story is a little bit different than yours. um, And I won't go into too much detail, but the, uh, I I was not in love with my last corporate job. So um, the, the the boats were kind of burned for me, (laughs) that decision, (laughs) that decision was made. Um, all right. So, so t- talk to me about, um, you know, like what were some of the challenges that you faced when you, um, when you finally burned the boats and moved in, like went full time with your, with your business? You know, I, I know that for any new business, acquiring clients can be a challenge. Like wh- wh- what did you, what did you do? What worked and what didn't work? Yeah. So, but a lot didn't work, right? And that's what we don't see when we see quote unquote success stories when people that that did the transition, they don't see what doesn't work. But um, you know what what did work was I used that uh, constraint that I had, like the time and focus constraint that I had to find the offers that I could actually support. So when I look back, that was the most strategic thing I, I did. And obviously I didn't know, like, I, you know, nobody told me like, do that and you're going to be successful or like, this is how you do it. But I kind of like figured that myself because I just was so burned out, like with all the things going on that I had to offer something 
that didn't take my time or that I could support properly, give people results without being myself in front of people all the time. So I think like one of the things that I recommend for anybody that that is looking to transition or that is starting a side hustle, trying to fill the waters is like, Absolutely. Look at your own situation first, what you have going on. I am sure everybody has a set of strengths and also constraints, right? Like things that you just can't do no matter the advice that you get out there. Uh, And it's the easiest thing to just look at someone that has a seven, eight figure business doing this for the past 10, 15 years when internet, you know, marketing and digital products was like the wild west, (laughs) Mm -hmm. you know, and that's how they grew. And it's really easy to just accept that as the way you need to go about the first steps in your business. And I live that for for a long time until I said, I, I just don't have the time. I don't have the time to be out there like creating content all the time. Like I had to automate my life, my offers, my business. Uh, that's how I found, found out about deadline funnels. But like literally look at your own strengths, your own opportunities, like do your SWOT analysis for your own business before you find a framework, before you go too deep into anything. I think that was like the one thing, if I can pinpoint that I did right. Um, I also did, you know, save up. If you have a full-time business, don't quit too soon. I understand. I can understand like you, some people have to quit because they just can't no longer do it. And I, Mm -hmm absolutely get it. But if you can hang in there just enough so you can put aside, uh, you know, some money, uh, I kind of funded my business the first, you know, three or four months that I was literally developing and testing my big offer, like the offer that actually gave me the legs to, to, to grow the business with capital that I kind of stashed away from my company, like bonuses and stocks and all of the good stuff. So it was about $10,000 that I had put aside just for business expense after growing a little bit of my, you know, my, my um, home savings as well. So for as long as you can, (laughs) I recommend you kind of do that transition kind of in stages because the reality, and I don't know, you talk to a lot of entrepreneurs, maybe that's what you see, but the reality is that you just cannot control or even predict when your offer is going to hit big, right? I went through a number of smaller offers and small in other ways to sell before my one, like the, the first offer really hit and got traction. So you really can't, like you can put the effort, you can show up, you can try different things, but it's going to take you some time and you don't know how long that's going to take to get traction with a new business with, with, you know, something completely new. Yeah. So why don't you, why don't you tell me about your offer that finally clicked? You know, when you look back, is there, is there something about it that, that you, you now see with 2020 hindsight was the reason why it clicked? Oh, absolutely. I put all in this into a framework because I think it's, it's something that we, a lot of entrepreneurs do current kind of like uh, on the fly. They never really assess back. But, um, you know, one of the things, again, like I didn't push to, um, I didn't fall in love with my offer. I actually let the, let my audience pick what kind of offer, what kind of delivery mechanism, like how they wanted to consume that information. So I had, as anybody, right? Like you can look at the opportunities, like the things you know, the things you've mastered, the things you can teach and share with people. Uh, Some people have like just one thing. And I am so always so jealous of those people that are like, 
I am the expert in cooking, making, and like, I'm the best in my, <laughs> but for some of us, uh, I think Marie Forleo says we're like multi-passionate entrepreneur, whatever it's called, <laughs> but you know, look at, uh, I looked at all the things I was passionate about and I could help people. And, um, and I tried and I packaged that offer office. So offer. So the first thing that really hit big for me was a self-liquidating offer funnel um, called launch plan in a day. So it's a is a is a traditional SLO kind of funnel. We have you know an entry level offer, an order bump, and a one-time offer. And again, like that was based on my experience. I was a launch manager for biotech before. And when I got into this world of course creation and all of that good stuff, I said, this is something that there's not much out there. And I know it's going to help people really organize their thoughts and get their launches lined up to happen. Um, but the way that I shaped as an SLO, that was the really tr real trick behind the success of it is that I broke my offer and redid my offer many times the months before. So I didn't really love one thing that I created. I had like a, the early version of it was something called workshop launch kit. It, the idea was like all in one, you know, anything for your paid workshop. If you wanted to do a paid workshop, you would buy this, this $97 offer and you would get it. And then it wasn't clicking people, you know, they would buy, but it would be like 10 sales here and there. I would have to do a big webinar for it. Just, it was hard. So I broke it down into smaller pieces and then I put into a funnel. And when you see people excited about that idea, and one of the things that I realize is that when people need something, when you put something in front of them that they actually really need and are excited to get, they will show. They really come and like, I want this. I don't care. Like, when is it ready? It was just a free challenge, but people were so excited to get their the, the, the planning templates. So that's when I realized I had a, a, a winner offer. And then I created the whole full funnel and like all the good stuff. And I was already play, playing, you know, with ads because again, I didn't have the time uh, to post on social media to do any of this. So ads was my game uh, when I was working you know, working corporate. Um, so I was already kind of like getting better at the whole ads game. And that was the first offer that kind of set up my, my, um, my first year in business kind of like with a good start. So now um, you tell me about, tell me about what you help your clients do. Um, you, you help them to evergreen their, their business. Why don't you, why don't you tell me about, about that and some of the, some of the frameworks that you share with them? Yeah, no, absolutely. So from that experience, you know, a lot of people, obviously, they see you're doing something. And uh, like I said, I realized that testing and, you know, playing with your offer before you build your funnel was the actual like, the, the actual click moment for me, right? Like it was that, that, okay, this is how I believe people should approach their funnels instead of the other way around. It's like, you just build the funnel and hope that, you know, someone is going to fix it or, you know, hope that it works. Um, so I started just like consulting and just helping people get their offers set up on the same, and, 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 you know, by interviewing when that funnel was working. And my rule of thumb is like, before it makes a hundred thousand, I don't even take my eyes out of anything. Like I don't move that, that thing needs to either grow at a hundred thousand or, you know, get, get, get put aside. So once I had, I hit that mark about like four months into it, then I said, okay, now it's time to look for what's next in the business. I didn't have anything and uh, interviewing people. And I was like, okay, the next thing I think I can help people is with their launch data, 
right? Like how to debrief, like how to go into the analytics of your launch so you can scale your launch. Nobody wanted to talk about it. Nobody wanted to, <laughs> they just wanted to know how to create an evergreen funnel <laughs> like mine that ran, you know, a hundred percent just ads driven. Like I didn't have to post anywhere and it was making a lot of money. It was before iOS. Um, so people just wanted to know how I did it. And then I create, I put on a framework called straight to evergreen, uh, which is this, this journey to find the right offer the right audience for Evergreen and to find the right funnel, right? Because a lot of people just know how to do or it has experienced webinar funnels. And I'm like, no, there is a whole world of funnels out there. There's a whole way, like you can create your own funnel. That's not what matters. So like Straight to Evergreen is this framework to test your offer, to test your hooks, to test your ads, before you you come up with a system that technically or hopefully at that point works on autopilot and doesn't break that's like my 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 goal in life and how i uh go about you know teaching people how to get an evergreen funnel that really doesn't break doesn't need a ton of work doesn't need doesn't need rework so t- talk to me about how you teach people to test their offer before they build out their funnel. What are some of the ways that someone can do that? So I have a, a, a you know, there are a few ways, obviously, depending on the level of your offer, you know, we categorize in three different ways. So this program is a little bit different or what I teach is a little bit different because I don't have one framework or one way to set up your funnel that's going to scale your offer, Right. I work with you like, okay, what is your offer benefit and what kind of uh, level or price point we're talking about? So there's pretty much three different ways, three different categories. You have your lower ticket offers that you would validate or you test uh, with free content. Like I always like to start getting traction with your ads and start communicating with your cold audiences before you even create anything. If they don't like it, if they don't want it, people that never heard about Roberta ever, (laughs) if they don't want what what you're offering for free, in theory, they don't want to pay for it. So pretty much we set up those micro tests and it's all using paid advertising primarily to cold audiences to start testing the offer hooks, the offer promises that cold audiences are mostly interested about consuming and and, and getting for free most of the time. Now, if you have obviously like a, you know, 5,000 coaching program, something like more high ticket, that we are, we, we recommend testing with affiliate bonuses, for example. That's how I created my program. Test it as a free item that you can obviously get paid and is a certain level that you capture the right audience. So it gets a little bit more complicated. I'm trying to kind of <laughs> give you a quick overview. But for each level, we try to set up, there is like a protocol to test it that in theory represents the cold audiences true wishes and and you know what they're really uh craving for because i believe for something to really take off you know you really have to sell water in the desert like if you're selling sand in the desert like there is ab- there's no way any funnel expert <laughs> can, ads expert can solve that problem And most people have a great offer, but sometimes it's just not a great offer for cold audiences. So cold, you know, for anybody that's watching this and doesn't really understand the lingo is like people that have never been exposed to any 
of your content that is not in your list, that doesn't follow you on social media. It's truly like people that are just either searching for your topic and they come up with like a, a you know, a, your YouTube, your funnel, like through a Google search or a YouTube search uh, or through ads that you are targeting, that you're putting the offer in front of them. Uh, but primarily, you know, the biggest problem with funnels that I've seen by helping my students kind of troubleshoot their own funnels is that the offer and the audience match is kind of missing something in there and something in, sometimes it's messaging, but uh, very often is how to position your offer so it's more appealing or is exactly what a code audience is dying to get. Right. So um, the, um, you know, I've, I've been in the direct response world for, I think about two decades now. And one of the, one of the things that I, I've heard from the, the the OGs of direct response marketing is that it's really comes down to the, the the offer, the offer and the audience above all else. I mean, you can be an amazing copywriter, but it's the, the the copy gets a whole lot easier if you have something that your audience is just dying for. Um, and it sounds like that's really one of the core principles that you help your clients go through as well. Yeah. No. Absolutely. I mean. You know, we don't, I, I didn't invent any of this. I'm kind of like just reshaping and repackaging, right? This whole, all those concepts and principles, but yes, is the offer, but is the offer to a cold audience? I think that's the piece that, you know, it hasn't been really said that way for funnels or for evergreen funnels is that no matter how many people you have in your list, like you're going to have millions of followers, eventually for your evergreen funnel to really work on autopilot, you will have to use ads, right? We see all the big people in the, in like, if you want something that really scales to millions and so on, you got to use ads. And that's the piece that most funnels start to struggle because they are made today, as of today, the current advice is primarily to create funnels, testing in your warm audience. And again, like there's all merit to that strategy because obviously it's cheaper. It gives you great insights to what your audience wants, but not always your cold audience is going to respond to something the same way that your warm audience. And that's really like the trick of straight to evergreen is like, if you want to put something in evergreen for real, like that in autopilot, uh, you got to start with that mindset and trying to reach and teach your, teach the algorithm, teach, teach uh, the ads in your account and all that good stuff early on. So it can pick up and scale once you have it all created. So there's a, there's a little bit more than that, but yes, the offer is central is offer audience and then the third part of it is the funnel, sort of like finding the right funnel for your offer and your audience. But we start with, with finding enough of your audience to support the growth and shaping your offer to something that they want. Yeah. So how much, how much would you expect if, if, if I came to you and I said, hey, I want to test this offer to a cold audience? Um, how much would you advise me to be prepared to spend or invest in order to uh, figure out, you know, is, is my offer, is my offer going to click with that cold audience? I, uh, I, I joke with my students. I said, you know, I'm a sore loser. I hate losing money. Uh, I can't go to any casinos because it's just terrifying to me to lose like 20 bucks. So to me, it's all about creating those micro, like I said, micro testing and understanding that the result that you're looking for might not be sales, but it's something in between, right? And you progress from free to like a low, the lowest possible price that you can charge and all of that good stuff, founding members, launch, affiliates, like we've been using affiliates to test our own offers with great success. And the affiliate is great because 
if someone buys the other program, like and and wants yours as a bonus, that's great validating. Uh, but you don't have the overhead of producing a full launch and creating a full program just to figure that people are not that interested, right? So there are ways to test, and I recommend always starting with the minimum to get you a set of results. So it's all kind of like micro experiments to test your offer. So the first level that I recommend to everybody is to do the core promise for free. So, and with that, but you use paid ads to fill that. So I love challenges. I think is one of the best ways to interact with people and get feedback like, you know, live without being in a paid environment. So if you're running a challenge, like run a free challenge, but the outcome of the challenge is your actual offer, right? Your actual promise and try to run ads and fill that like a hundred people. And it's all like, uh, I like to work with a budget, make a budget, whatever you have, you know, make sure you have enough to test all the way. Like you don't know if this first round is gonna, you're gonna go forward or if you wanna, if you need to redo it, right? So you gotta have legs and this comes, uh, I, I don't know if I even put on my, on my bio, but I have a, uh, my undergrad is in genetics. So that's where I learned all of this is like test, test, test for years. And then you might get no results at the end. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I recommend you start really, really small with free items that free uh, offers, right? Challenges or uh, lead magnet, anything that you can get people or a free workshop that you just can get, you know, you put a hundred dollars and you see how many leads and then you start benchmarking because very important in the early stages is how much you can get for a lead, for a cold lead to like your offer, right? And that's going to give you indications. And now like, stop me if I'm going too technical at this point, (laughs) maybe your audience is like, not interested, but the benchmarks you set up for, at that stage are much more important than anything I can tell you about the industry funnels or anything like that, because how much you paid for a cold lead, right? To sign up for your challenge that is based on your main promise of your offer, that is your benchmark, is what you can do today with Facebook, with your account or, uh, you know, meta advertising, whatever you're using for paid advertising, that's your benchmark for that offer free. So then from that, we can do a viability study and like understand, okay, I spent a hundred dollars and I got 10 people on my challenge. That's $10 a lead for a free offer. If I'm selling something that is $37, I got to do something here, right? Like <laughs> my numbers right. are not going to be so, so profitable. So we can start studying and evaluating how much this audience or how well we can target this audience. And we can start building conversations, like real conversations around the real numbers that the person can have. But you ask for a number, I'm going to just put it out there. I just mm-hmm. arrange. Um, I do believe in the early stages, you should invest at a minimum $250, $500 uh, for an evergreen, like free test. And then a later, you know, when you are starting to test with paid offers, testing out really the funnel structure, uh, I recommend two or three times the amount that you're going to charge for the program ultimately. So if it is, you know, $500, like $1,500 for just testing the funnel, you're going to sell it much less. You might not break even, but that's what I recommend just to gauge, just to get good data. Um, but again, like we work with so many different budgets and I think, again, is the same thing that happened to me when I assess my time, which is like, don't pick the strategy 
that you cannot support that the, if you only have a hundred dollars to test, like look around to see what you can do. Like maybe the best strategy for you is a lead magnet, right? Because it's cheaper. And then you try to sell through your funnel, through emails or put a webinar, you know, into that sequence, but maximize your budget. So I work, my students, when they come in, you know, I say, I recommend three or four times the, the, the cost of your program just to, to, just to buy in the game. And, but, you know, we work with any budget, as long as you have a budget to test, uh, but just know that you're going to have to make, you know, important decisions, good decisions. Really, I really like your approach and the, and the framing that you use of the viability study um, really, really gels with things that I've, I've tried in the past that have, have worked really well, which is to make sure that you're getting some signals from the audience before you go and you build out all the infrastructure and take all the time to build out these complex funnels. You want to make sure that you're building that funnel around something that the audience actually wants. And so it's really, really smart the way that you've structured that. Um, Roberto, why don't we, why don't we, um, why don't we close out this interview by you telling us who you like to work with, who you can best help and how they can find you. Oh, fantastic. Um, I love helping, you know, digital entrepreneurs, course, digital programs, membership owners kind of launch and scale evergreen funnels, I think is my passion. All those numbers where everybody kind of gets a little frustrated, I thrive. Uh, and you can check out all the latest and greatest at robertawest.com. And we're actually just launching an agency as well, because I do understand that it's kind of something that not a lot of people like you and I would love to learn more how to build funnels. <laughs> mm -hmm. So we're creating an agency, uh, but you can find that, find more about uh, through robertawest.com. Awesome. Well, Roberta, thank you very much for coming here and sharing your frameworks for going straight to Evergreen. I know that this is something that is um, going to be really, really interesting to my audience. So thank you for your time. Absolutely. Thank you so much for the opportunity. I love that line funnels. It makes all of this possible. So very grateful to be here and to be one of your clients.